events, but I cannot claim more than a casual relationship with him. Actually, he was the kind of introspective, withdrawn man whom it was difficult for anyone to get to know well. <coughs> In 1983, <coughs> on the Appalachian Trail Conference, published its version of Walking with Spring. And Florence Nickel, the overall editor of the project, recruited me to write the book's forward. After I had done so and the book appeared, I asked Earl to autograph my copy for me. And he wrote on the title page, with special regard and respect to Maurice, my friendly critic. <laughs> That's about as close as our one I ever got. <laughs> <laughs> the upshot was that in writing Earl's biography, I had to depend heavily on other people whenever questions arose. Chief among these sources was David Donaldson, who had hiked with Earl for part of the latter's 50th anniversary trek. For my choice, I remembered that when reading Walking with Spring, I had come upon Earl's description of stopping at a shelter in Pennsylvania where he browsed a while in the trail register where a previous hiker had quoted some lines from the American poet Henry Herbert Nibs. Sun and wind and the sound of rain, hunger and thirst and strife, God to be out on the trails again with a grip on the main of life. <laughs> Actually, Nibs was referring to horse trails, but no matter. <laughs> <laughs> After further discussion, David and I agreed on their grip on the main of life. 